And in another major development, the CDC is now recommending that some immune compromised people get a third dose of the vaccine. Joining me right now to discuss is Dr. Jane Morgan, the executive director of the Piedmont Healthcare COVID Task Force. Dr. Morgan, always good to see you. So the approved third dose um, that is for certain patients who are likely to have had poor immune response to a full course of either Pfizer's or Moderna's vaccine. But new data from the CDC shows that more than a million people received unauthorized extra doses of COVID-19 uh, vaccine before this FDA decision. So uh, what do people need to understand about this new decision? So uh, thanks for having me today, Fred. One of the things we have to think about is that this is really the next dose for these patients, not necessarily a booster dose. This is the next dose. So a second dose for Johnson & Johnson, a third dose for Moderna and Pfizer. And that is because there are certain groups of people who were not able to mount the full immune response that the rest of us did with the vaccine. So even though they received either the single dose of Johnson & Johnson or the two doses of Moderna and Pfizer, they really didn't reach that high level of efficacy. And so it's been determined that they need an additional dose such that they could reach the same level of protection as the rest of us. There are about 1 million people who've gone out, as we know from the CDC now, and, and gotten an additional dose. Uh, what we would say to that is certainly there is no data to support that. We're not looking towards that. We do see that countries, Germany and Israel, are moving in that direction. What we'd like to see here in the United States is that people move forward with getting the first dose as we continue to try to reach that herd immunity. So Georgia um, is now one of five states that have fewer than 10% of ICU beds available, according uh, to the most recent data from the health department. The Piedmont Healthcare System has several hospitals in the state. So what do your hospitals look like right now? Yes, yeah, so, you know, this is really critical. And one of the things that we have to understand, such a great question, Fred, is that so many times these hospitals are going on to diversion. And what does diversion mean? That means that people who are not suffering from COVID, but are having heart attacks or strokes or car accidents, it's harder to get that critical emergency care, including your children. If something were to happen, a choking incident, a fall, um, it's difficult, it's more difficult to get care at hospitals that are now being overrun, including the ICUs with COVID patients. So it's not just COVID patients and vaccinated and unvaccinated that are impacted, it's the entire society if our hospitals are at a critical juncture because we're not even able to take care of the non-COVID emergencies. So let's talk about uh, schools in Georgia. The Gwinnett County public school system has recorded nearly 700 positive cases among students and staff since school started just uh, a little over a week ago. So officials have attributed most of the cases to community spread and say they have not had any outbreaks in the schools, but the district does require masks. So then there's the Cobb County School District, which does not have a mask mandate and has reported over 550 active cases in its schools over the last week. And uh, the governor of Georgia has been outspoken against masks. So well, what are your thoughts and concerns when you look at the current scenario and school has only been in progress in some cases just a few days, if not a week? Yeah, absolutely. I think that the science and the research is clear that masks do protect us from viruses, not only the COVID virus, but it protects us from other viruses as well. The flu, we've seen a very, very mild flu season. And so uh, we want to continue to think about these masks as part of our uniform, something easy to take on, easy to take off. We have now a plethora of ongoing research and studies um, and documents that are showing us that masks do not put children at risk. The single study out of JAMA Pediatrics that, that refuted that has since been debunked and retracted by the and Journal of And that really is American. a response, that's a response to, sorry to interrupt, to parents and in school district meetings uh, recently in Tennessee who said, the masks keep my children from getting adequate oxygen and they need oxy oxygen to grow. Yeah, and you know that may have been um, uh, an outreach, and an outreach from that particular study. Which again, mm -hmm. I want to emphasize that study not only was debunked, but it was retracted mm -hmm. by the Journal of the American Medical Association. And so that is now misinformation. That is not correct. Mm 
And so what we know is that masks do protect the nose and the mouth from any aerosolol, aerosolized or respiratory droplets, which is how this particular virus spreads and continues to invade our bodies. We serve as the host of, of this virus. And every time it invades our bodies, including those of our children, it replicates. And every time it replicates, it has the opportunity to mutate and learn and become stronger and smarter. And this is how we continue to get these variants that are increasingly becoming uh, difficult for us to manage as we are now in this fourth surge. And we certainly want to be concerned about what other variants there might be coming. So in your view, you know, what more can be done or said to get more people on board with, if not masking in schools, uh, but vaccinating amongst those who are eligible. You know, that, that I'm, I'm often asked that when we have uh, people say, you know, I never get vaccines, I'm not vaccinated against measles, mumps, rubella, and look at me, I'm so healthy. Well, the reason that you're healthy is because as long as you and others remain a small slice of the greater American population, then you benefit from that herd immunity. You benefit from living in a society where by and large, the majority of the people are immunized, so there's not an opportunity for the virus to penetrate. It's not that you've reached a certain level of nirvana or some type of uh, physical um, um, uh, superiority or you have a certain cocktail of vitamins that you're taking. No, you don't take vaccines and remain healthy because I'm taking my vaccine and you live in my community. So you actually are dependent on me for your health. And so we have to think about that with this COVID vaccine as well. You determining not to take the vaccine certainly impacts others, and it also makes you dependent on others for your health. Mm, all great points. Dr. Jane Morgan, thank you so much. Good to see you. Stay well. Thanks, Red.